I'd like to act out a movie. Now, this will be two, two and a half hours long, so... <laughs> Some of you are still taking this seriously. <laughs> That's not gonna work out. <laughs> Our kids are in the car. <laughs> this is one of my favorite movies. Here we go. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Join me, Luke. Join me on the dark side. I'll never join you! Ah! Hello, Master Luke, Master Luke. Red leader to gold leader standing by. Gold leader to red leader standing by. Look out, Parkin. It's a trap. Uti waka loko solo. Utu chaba waka. Yes, Go ahead, young Skywalker. Join me and your father on the dark side of the moon. Do or do not. There is no try. Notebook. Uh, my wife and I, we've only been in two fights. First fight we ever had was during our engagement process. You get to register for gifts. I didn't know that. I'm like, let's get married again. Let's get free stuff. That's great. My wife wanted to register at a place called Bed Bath & Beyond. Have you ever heard of that place? <laughs> I'm a guy, though, so I'm like, let's register at the Bass Pro Shop. You know what I mean? Like, Cabela's, let's go there. And uh, we compromised. And we went to Bed Bath & Beyond. So, uh, pretty much in charge. <laughs> Second fight we had was a couple days ago. We played this game called Celebrity Crush, where you share each other's celebrity crushes. And if your relationship is going fine, don't play that game. <laughs> it's a lot of attention. My wife told me her celebrity crush, Harrison Ford. That's who she told me, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's old, right? <laughs> Well, I got really jealous because I'm like, I can't compete with that, right? My wife wants Han Solo. She ended up with an Ewok. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Looking like something you make in a Build-A-Bear. I know, it's a little weird. I like being a dad. It's my favorite. Uh, I'm a great dad one-on-one, -on -one, but when I have them both by myself, it does feel a little overwhelming because they outnumber me, right? Then they go from being my adorable children to like, a pack, right? They're the velociraptors from Jurassic Park at that point. And my older daughter is six, so she can open doors like the velociraptors in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Call my baby testing our fence for weaknesses. They're clever girls is what I'm saying. <laughs> right? If I see one of them coming down the hall at me, it's already too late. The other one's rushing in from the side for the kill. Clever girls. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. I'm kind of a nerd. I don't know if you guys could tell from that great Jurassic Park joke that I just did, but I also like the movie Star Wars a lot, so I got my daughter and I lightsabers to play with for Christmas one year, and a while ago we were having a little lightsaber duel out on the front lawn, a little battle of the fates, and she's like, Daddy, I want to go for a walk. I was like, all right, sweetie, well, go stand on the porch because I have to run in the house and get my keys. Don't get off the porch. I'm going to be in and out in two seconds. Stay on the porch. So I go in, grab my keys, I come out, she's not on the porch. She's out in the grass swatting at bugs with her lightsaber. And I was like, ooh, sweetie, go inside, we're not gonna go for a walk now because you didn't listen. She's like, no, I wanna go for a walk. I'm like, I told you to stay on the porch and you didn't and there's consequences. She's like, no. And I'm like, cool, I could beat the guy who drags a screaming child into his house, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> so I walk up to my daughter. Here's the thing, guys, she's still holding her lightsaber. <laughs> So when I get within striking distance, she takes a swing at me, like a real swing, like an I'm gonna strike you down where you stand, old man, swing at me. <laughs> but I too was still holding my lightsaber and 
been a nerd for a long time. Not about to lose a lightsaber duel to a six-year-old, right? So I smack it out of her tiny little hand, which she's lucky to have, by the way. I was like, Amelia, go inside. I am your father. <laughs> Such a dumb joke, you guys. Don't reward this behavior. <laughs> The weekend before that, I was in Portland. And while I was there, I saw a girl that was wearing a shirt that said, nerds are cool. And I thought, are they though? <laughs> they're not, I don't think they are, they're not. Listen, they're not. Contrary to popular belief, okay? L last time I checked, those kids who are out LARPing every Saturday weren't using their foam swords to fight off the ladies, okay? <laughs> That dude with a weird neck beard who stays inside all day making YouTube tutorials for the latest Minecraft updates, he is not cool, he's not. I'll tell you what's cool. What's cool is for cool kids to act nerdy. Yeah, you just appropriate the stuff nerds like, pretend that you did it first and make it suck, okay? It's the same thing white people have been doing to all the stuff black people like, and it's gotta stop. It has to stop, okay? You already have so many things that the nerds don't have, like friends. Oh, could you just let them have Doctor Who? Could that be their thing, please? I'm sick of it, and I know there are people, every, like everybody got real quiet on this, and everyone's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I, he's not talking about me. I, I'm very nerdy. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. I'm talking about you, actually. I am. Oh, wait, you're a fan of one of the highest grossing and most beloved film franchises of all time? How nerdy of you. How peculiar you are. I just wanna get to know you. You're not like the other boys. Oh. Have you read the Hand of Thrawn trilogy? Do you know how many replicas IG-88 made of himself? Are you single? If you answered yes to these questions, maybe you're a nerd, maybe. But if you just own the trilogy, congrats. You're at the same level of nerdiness as, I don't know, John McCain, okay? <laughs> Doesn't make you nerdy. Also, Harry Potter too. Liking Harry Potter is not nerdy, okay? It's honestly actually kind of weird at this point, really. I feel strange. I feel like I'm the only person in my age group that isn't still obsessed with Harry Potter. It's, it's, uh, there's 30-year-olds there's everywhere who are like, oh, I'm a Ravenclaw. No, you're an adult, Sarah. <laughs> years old your letter's not coming all right you gotta let it go Sarah I get that we love the books when we were kids but a book that you read when you were 12 can't still be your favorite book today okay it can't like if you asked me what my favorite book was and I told you the hatchet you'd think I was an idiot and you would be right <laughs> This dude hasn't read a book since fifth grade. No, I haven't, I have not. I have not, but Gary Paulson speaks to me. I... Oh, he's so good, he's so good. Have you read Brian's Winter? Oh, I might like it more than The Hatchet, actually. But also, I never even thought it was that good of a book to begin with. I can't, like people treat it like it's a masterpiece and I'm just, Sorry, it's not. J.K. Rowling did not write a masterpiece. She wrote Star Wars with sucky lightsabers. <laughs> she did. It is, I, it, is so, it is a direct ripoff of Star Wars. I am positive of it. Have you ever looked at them side by side? Oh, what do we have here? It's a young male orphaned protagonist who for his own safety has been sent to live with his aunt and uncle until a mysterious bearded stranger who was actually the one to deliver him to his aunt and uncle when he was a baby comes into his life and starts to teach him about this ancient kind of magic. <laughs> Granted, he's gonna learn a lot more about this magic from an older, wiser wizard who's high most of the time. 
regardless, his uncle is totally against this magic stuff. He won't even tell him what really happened to his parents, but against his uncle's wishes, he leaves home for the very first time, makes some new friends, meets a pretty, impetuous young girl, and though there will be an odd sexual tension between the two of them throughout, he will only ever love her like a sister while she struggles with the feelings that she has for his best friend, the scruffy comic relief. <laughs> of the existence of this super villain who killed his parents with his sorcerer's ways before he started calling himself Lord something or the other. But quite fortunately, it turns out that our hero is naturally good at flying and locating incredibly small targets. <laughs> Two centimeters? That's not impossible. I used to bullseye snitches on my firebolt back home. They're not much bigger than two centimeters. Don't touch the goblet, Cedric. It's a trap. I'm having a weird week. The other day I noticed, if you watch all the Star Wars movies, back to back, in order, and really pay close attention, you're a friggin' loser. Yeah, um... Some of these are gonna be are gonna be jokes. That's not one of them. <laughs> My wife and I we're doing our best. It's hard with kids to get wife time. You know, our idea of going out and having a night out is basically waiting till the kids fall asleep and watching Netflix. <laughs> so here's how it works at our house. One of us picks out the movie, and the other one hates their life for 90 minutes. <laughs> and then we switch the next week. So my wife picked out this movie one week. It's called, uh, it's her turn to pick the movie. She picks this movie, it's called uh, Notes on a Scandal. It's about a high school teacher that has an affair with one of her students. My wife is a high school teacher. <laughs> so right away, I hate this movie. <laughs> Halfway through the movie, she turns to me, big smile on her face, and she goes, babe, totally hypothetically, <laughs> what would you do if I told you I had an affair with a student? What kind of a game is this? It's not a fun game. I said, I don't know, babe, why don't you try not to? And then she got mad at me for how I, she's like, are you kidding me? You think that's something I could do? You think I'm capable of, you think I would actually, and I'm just like, how am I in trouble here? <laughs> what, what did I do? So the next week we're watching my movie. I got to pick out the movie, right? So halfway through my movie, I look at my wife and I go, oh, hey babe, totally hypothetically, what would you do if I told you I was a stormtrooper? <laughs> Doesn't feel so good, does it? <laughs> she called me a moron and went to bed. My wife is great. We've been married 16 years. Uh, but, oh, thank you. That's very nice. Yeah. That is very nice of you, but we've been together 23. I have to say that because she wants credit for time served. <laughs> Married or not, been together a long time, 23 years. And we met in a bar, because 23 years ago, pretty much what you had to do. We didn't have your texting and your match.com. You had to be rejected face to face. <laughs> then you had to walk away in your Jedi robe, that sucked. <laughs> no, you do want to dance. These aren't the dorks you're looking for. <laughs> you're a dork. I was very interested in dating in my growing up years, and uh, the feeling just wasn't mutual. It just wasn't. <laughs> and I, I, I thought, what I need to figure out is, what do women want? And, and, and rather than consulting any women, 
I tried to figure it out on my own. And, and, and the conclusion I came to was that women want a man who can do Star Wars impressions. <laughs> Obviously. And the impression that I do well is the, uh, the, in the, the snow planet, the uh, creatures, they rode through the snow like horses, the uh, kangaroo rats on steroids, those are the tauntauns, that's right. Here's my impression of the tauntaun, here we go. I didn't date much in high school. <laughs> Are there any Star Wars fans here? Star Wars fans tonight? Oh my God, almost everyone? Fantastic. I, uh, I like Star Wars now because uh, the great thing is it's a good time to be a Star Wars fan because a new one comes out every single Christmas now. We're in a good thing. When I was a kid, you had to wait six, seven years and then you couldn't see them on video even for like 20 years. Like it was crazy. Now you get them all the time. It's fantastic. And uh, so Rogue One just came out this Christmas, this past Christmas, but a year before that, the movie The Force Awakens came out. How many people remember The Force Awakens? Remember that? That was great. Right so that was the first installment, right? The continuation after Return of the Jedi. So a long time we had to wait for that, right? So when I went to see it, I'm going to tell you a story. Is there anyone here who hasn't seen The Force Awakens but wants to? You? Okay, you've had a year and a half. I don't know what you're waiting for. They're out. We used to not do it. They went without you? Okay, but they're still. It's on video. Twice? Okay, it's on video. You got it for free. All right, well, there's a spoiler alert in this story. So if you don't want to hear it, plug your ears. But yeah, here we go. So you've had enough time. I don't feel right for it. I mean, I do, that you got left. That part I feel about, but there's plenty of time. We show it to her sometime. Yeah. So, okay, so my wife and I go see it the night it opens. And the great thing, you guys know this because we kind of live west of the Mississippi. Once it's midnight on the East Coast, we get to see it late Thursday night, right? That's one of the cool things. They don't get to do that on the East Coast. So my wife and I go see it Thursday night. Everyone else got to wait till Friday. And uh, we come home afterwards, and uh, she's texting with her friends. And I love the force, it was so good. She's texting with her friend, and she goes, oh, hey, her, her friend's husband is going the next day. They bought 10 tickets for a group of them to go, and someone doesn't, isn't gonna go, so they have an extra ticket. She goes, hey, do you wanna go with them? And I was like, no, you know what? I, li I liked it, it was awesome, I really, it's a great movie, but I just saw it. I don't wanna see it twice within 24 hours. It's a little too much, right? And uh, so I go, no, 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 they'll find someone to, to, to give it to, tell them to give it away. And she goes, she goes, no, you should really go, that would be fun. And then this is when I realized she doesn't care if I have fun. She wants me to hang out with her best friend's husband, so that we bond and then we could do double date stuff down the road. That's really what she wants. She's trying to plant that seeds, right? So I tried to outsmart her. I was like, hey, you know what? We just spent 30 bucks on it tonight. I don't want to spend another $15 on it tomorrow. It's Christmas time. I don't want to, that seems like a waste of money. And she, she goes, no, 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 no. She outsmarted me. She goes, they have an extra ticket. They're just giving it to you. You don't have to pay for it. I was like, darn, she got me, okay. So she goes, you should go. So I was like, you know what? Someone's gonna wanna go. Tell them to try and give it away. If they can't, I will go. So that's how it's left, okay? If they can't find someone to give it to. Now, as I finish the rest of the story, you all seem like very nice people. Hopefully you've realized I'm a nice person as well. But every nice person stops being nice at some point, right? Everyone has a breaking point. So as I finish this story, I want you guys to think at what point you would have stopped being a nice person, okay? <laughs> The next morning, that guy calls me at 7 a.m. Some people done already. Some people already out being nice just because of the early phone call, all right? I'm a comedian, I sleep till noon. So that was like calling me at four in the morning. I'm like, what? what's going on? He's like, hey, you coming today? Buddy, we got an extra ticket. I was like, hey, I got a show. I'm not sure I'm gonna be back by five. He goes, you'll be back, come on. I was like, try and give it away. But if, I don't, if you don't, I'll come. So, okay, so that's right. He calls me five more times throughout the day. Right? Okay, some people lose it. <laughs> Five more times. Finally, it's four o'clock. He's like, uh, he's like, uh, he calls me up. He's like, hey, Steve, we didn't give it away. We'll see you at the theater. I was like, all right. So I go there. I get there. It's about 10 minutes to showtime. I walk in, and there's him and the eight people that are with him. It's kind of like the front row here, right? And uh, he introduces me to these eight people. They're the nicest people you could ever want to meet. So nice, right? He's like, this is Bob. And Bob's like, hey, great to meet you. This is Wendy. Oh, hey, I've heard about you. Everyone's nice except the very last person he introduces me to. That guy is not nice. Everyone else is nice to meet you, blah, 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 blah. And then the last person he introduced to me, he goes, and this is Thurman. Okay, the guy's name is Thurman, okay? That's weird right away, right? Thurman, okay? This is a 40-year-old man named Thurman. And again, if you don't think that's weird, imagine 39 years ago, there was someone who looked at a baby and went, Thurman, no one would ever do that. No one would ever ruin a baby's life like that and say, yeah, that looks like a Thurman, right? So let me tell you about Thurman. Thurman's about 40 years old. Uh, he's half-dressed like Boba Fett. Do you know Boba Fett? <laughs> Boba Fett, the bounty hunter from the, the early ones. So I just half-dressed, he didn't fully commit. I would have loved it if he fully committed, but only the top half 
was Boba Fett. He had the armor, he had a gun, he had like a booster rocket on his back, he had a, a helmet jacked back a little bit on his, on his thing. Then he had cargo shorts, black socks, and Crocs. So he looked like if Boba Fett had retired and let himself go a little, he was a little overweight, which I'm not, I'm not judging, I'm a little overweight myself, but he looked like he, he was not, you know what I mean, he was Boba Fett more than... Okay, he let himself go a little, so everyone else is nice, I don't care. But, but he says to me, Thurman, he goes, everyone else says nice to meet you, and he goes, and this is Thurman. Thurman looks at me and just says, 15 bucks. I go, uh, what? He goes, 15 bucks. So I look at my buddy, I was like, what, what's he talking about? He goes, oh, he's the one who got all the tickets, you owe him 15 bucks. I go, what? I, I wasn't even supposed to be here. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, uh, I didn't lose it at that point. I reach in my pocket, I'm like, my wife's involved, I wanna make her look bad. I reach in my pocket, I have $4. That's all I have, it's four singles. I'm thinking the nice people, someone might be like, don't worry about it, get us later. Next time we see you after the show, it's gonna start now, right? And so no one says anything, they all just stare at me. So I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, so I look, at, I look at Thurman, I was like, hey, I got my credit card, how about I'll, I'll buy you some pop, candy, a soda, that's probably gonna be more than 15 bucks. I was like, how about that? Thurman looks at me and he goes, I don't eat that crap. <laughs> Okay, he eats that crap. I eat that crap. I know other people that eat that crap. He eats it. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that body from eating salads. He's not... Do you, know you understand? He's not Boba Fett, is what I'm saying. He's just being a jerk with me for some reason, right? So I'm like, hey, I, I don't know what to do. So he comes up with an idea. He goes, he goes, there's an ATM across the street. This guy hasn't seen the movie. He's half dressed like Boba Fett. He's so excited about the movie, but he wants his, his 15 bucks. He's like, there's an ATM across the street. So I was like, all right. So I go outside. How many people would have driven home at that point? Okay, yeah, that's why I wish I would have thought of that. I didn't. I'm still, for some reason, trying to keep my head, right? I go across the street, I go to the ATM. The ATM gives me a $20 bill, okay? From what I've told you about Thurman, do you think he's gonna have change? No, he's not gonna have change. So I run in the bank really quick. I go to the teller, hey, can you break this? She goes, do you have an account here? I go, no, I don't have an account here. She goes, we can only break it if they have an account here. I was like, look, you gotta help me out. My wife set me up with this double date with this guy, and now this guy Thurman dressed like Boba Fett is giving me a hard time. She's like, Thurman, who names her kid Thurman? I was like, exactly. So she got it. So she breaks it up, she gives me four or fives. I walk back across the street. Thurman is outside the theater waiting for me. He's not even in the lobby anymore. The movie's about to start, he's, he's waiting. He's like a, a, a drug dealer, ready to collect his money or something. He's gonna break my legs if I don't have it. He goes, uh, he goes do you have the money? He saw me come for the bank. He knows I have the money, right? So uh, this is when I lost it. I could not handle it anymore at this point, right? He goes, uh, do you have my money? I go, yes. Here's your $15. Han Solo dies. <laughs> Did I go too far? I don't know if you've ever seen a grown man half dressed like Boba Fett <laughs> crying in the fetal position outside of an AMC theater. But I personally really, really enjoyed it.